My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Slice and Dice, where we are going to try our first hard mode run. Choose a curse. Monster Pristine, add... Wait, to all monsters, add Pristine to all sides. Has twice the effect if they have max HP. Or, add a core egg to every single fight. Has the ability to possibly summon a core. Monster HP, uh, all monsters have plus one HP for each four base HP they have. Or mana debt. First spell you cast each fight costs plus two mana. Reroll starting party and curse choices? Interesting. Well, I guess we should also think about our starting party in terms of thinking about this, right? Do I have the ability to easily deal damage to many targets in the first round? Not exceptionally. Do I have the ability to generate a bunch of mana very easily? Also not. Can I kill a core egg repeatedly on turn one? Not reliably at all. We're in fact quite low on damage. Making all the monsters pristine also seems hard. I'm taking the core egg. Thank heck it tried not to break here. Yep, because here's what we've got. Two block and a heal. Uh, that's two damage. I'm going to take that on the scoundrel rather than just spurning it. Uh, two damage on the target that is then focused. That's the best sign for the student to get. Okay. So I'm going to scoundrel on the null with the cleave attack. And then the fighter attacks the core, uh, the core egg on the top line. The squire follows up killing the target. And now we just have uh, two mana going into the next round. Got to focus exclusively on killing this null if possible. We don't have large damage numbers, so it's going to be uh, not possible. If possible, we'll do it, but it isn't, so we won't. Savvy? I can make the target vulnerable, which would then give me the ability to do it, I believe. Especially with that burst. Sinew and Enchanter both pop up here. Sinew with the cleave and chain side. The scoundrel also has a cleave side. The sinew also represents the ability to deal with core eggs on round one with the four damage exert a lot more of the time, which I think I will just need. Thankfully, I know if the core egg is going to attempt to summon a core before I have to decide whether or not I focus it exclusively. Hmm. I mean, unfortunately, the core egg on the top line, I can't really deal with it in any other way than that. I'm gonna follow up murdering that rat. And then we just have core egg and the arch of the next round. Great. Oh. If both of those core eggs were summoning this round, the first round rather, it could be real tough. I really would have liked more damage than this. Alas. The core egg attempts to flee. It rolls away successfully. Uh, we've got the cloak for dodge all incoming attacks and replace the middle left side with blank, plus three mana, on the rusty plate. I don't really want either of these, and I think I might want a random tier zero more. Gamblers two, change all sides. Negative one to all of them, plus one to the rightmost. No one's gonna wanna hold that right now. I'm gonna let a character hold it for a second, just in case there was an unlock associated. Leave chains really good. That's a nice follow up on the squire there as well. <sighs> Boy. Wonderful manner as well. My gosh. Okay. Ultimately, I think the question here is can I keep the squire alive? 
My goal is to remove as many of these rats from the board as possible this round. Unfortunately, the rat that is attacking the squire is at the very bottom. And because the rat that is attacking the squire is at the very bottom, it's going to be a lot harder for us to remove that way. Uh, one, three, and two? One, three, two is six? We can just kill the wolf directly. I was not even thinking about the possibility of that. I had a play that was going to be able to kill two of the rats instead. Uh, but I also now realize that I can even kill one of the rats with this play. Beautiful. Oh, I mean, look, if the core egg is never going to hatch, it's going to make life very easy for us. Uh, vulnerability, I guess I will take because it makes one damage instances enough to take a target down. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh wait, hang on. I set up for the wrong move. I'm not looking to make that vulnerable. Guess I'm gonna focus on the top line target instead. Kill them with the bursts. And just leave this rat here. And they should flee. A druid versus a seer. Druid does have more mana gain capacity. That's the ability for us to deal more damage as well. Hmm. Am I using the student spell, the slice? Not consistently, at least. Having a large initial impact, such as the uh, Seer does here, with the ability on the three mana single use sides, seems also very effective to me. The Druid is just completely replacing the student's abilities here, because the Druid has a balance spell, three mana in order to deal one damage to all enemies as well as heal one to all allies, which just eclipses entirely the slice for deal one damage to all enemies. Hmm. The ability to invest mana with Fortel, I mean... I really like the idea of these growth sides just being there over the course of the entire fight. I'm gonna take it. Alpha decides to summon, but the core egg does not. That's an incredibly good side. Um, I'm not gonna be able to hit that many instances of damage in a turn like this, so getting the one damage vulnerable to me doesn't seem like a great idea. But also, the scoundrel's not likely to hit anything valuable at all. So maybe I should just settle for what I can get. Um... Hmm. I might actually let the druid reuse the defense here in order to fully protect the squire this round, as well as get two growth triggers. Did I have to just get all shields here? One other thing I could do instead then is... Single damage and then double up on that. So now it's only an AoE effect required in order to kill the core egg on the top side. Suddenly having to generate enough damage to take that core egg out was probably going to be too much for me. AoE, help taking out one of the wolves. Gotta keep pushing. None of that would help. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Scoundrel does an AoE attack taking out the core egg on the top line. The follow-up to that is the squire's two damage on the focused target, which is the wolf on the top line. I follow up with two damage to the wolf on the bottom line. Sinew follows up to kill that target, and then, oh my god, I'm losing the Squire. Still, doing all of this, I will lose the Squire. Maybe I should rethink it. I could have killed both wolves and just let the Alpha on the field. Or just left the Alpha on the field, rather. That one's non-negotiable. That's how that has to go. So then, two damage against this target, two damage repeat. I mean, I can't take out the alpha this round. Look, 
literally no way can I take out the alpha this round. The maximum amount of damage I can get out of the reuse here is the druid reusing a growing side. So yeah, no, I'm going to revert back to the original play, which I still really do like. Just losing the Squire in this fight, completely acceptable. Uh, druid and Sinew murder the bottom. I re-give the Druid the ability to then attack one more time. And we have, like, significantly grown sides on the Druid as well up against the Alpha here. I'd settle for a Mana Gain side on the Student next roll, but not this roll. Its best side is obviously going to be the repeat, but I can't just, ex like, I can't expect to get that. Druid now has a 5 damage attack. I feel exceptionally vindicated. This is both pretty big. Oh my god, and the vulnerability as well? Yeah, we're taking out the wolf. So, murder the wolf. And then, defend and reuse and defend. And now we've got a 5 uh, defense shield as well on the druid. The druid now really doesn't want to hit any side that doesn't have growth on it. I say before I try to lock something on the druid that didn't have growth. <laughs> Just ridiculous reuse of these growth abilities. Love it. Um, don't need those. Don't need AoE effect. Um, getting excess mana this turn? Not exceptionally good for us, but it's what we'll do. Guess it helps set up for an AOE in a following turn. Big block, big shield. Mm. It's enough to kill the offer on the top line, which is a priority. Numero uno. And now it's just the wolf against us. Beautiful, thank heck. Whew. Hard mode's going okay so far. I don't expect it to retain this current level of okayness. But it's going okay so far. Buckler. Replace the middle left side with shield 2 and bloodlust. Or Ironheart. At exert and plus 1 to all sides. Plus 1 max HP. Having exert and plus 1 on all sides with the sinew here... That turns these into 5 damage exert, which is still pretty good. But also, it turns the 1 damage chain cleave into something that chains off of exert as well. Not that we can currently do that with other characters. But a 2 damage AoE is also really big. Actually, this Iron Heart could even just go on the Scoundrel, giving them a 2 damage vulnerable and a 2 damage cleave, because they're not even commonly activating them. Buckler wouldn't be bad for the Squire in this situation either. I'm going to take the Iron Heart. I'm going to give it to the Scoundrel. We're going to try and make the most out of turns that it is affected by. Koeg thankfully doesn't split here. <sighs> Buddy. I should take the most defensive side there. That actually works out incredibly. So the Squire has a shield 2 focus, and the Druid is going to shield themselves before that, giving the ability to set that up. Uh, which I guess the student's also going to throw some extra matter out into the field. Um... Actually... Student also throws that against the druid because we are going to be killing the barrel this round in order to also take out the snake. So we've got both of our top sides exerted here. The only people in my party that do damage, exerted. Mm, well, I say the only people in my party that deal damage, but that's not true. The druid also could have helped here. You should take someone else's damage on as well. 
then the druid defends you. Oof. I'm really not looking forward to fighting that core. The slate is just gonna completely stop up our ability to damage it. Love that chain AoE. Um. Do the chain AoE attack, give you the ability to do that again. I'm going to heal and cleanse Sinew and then block them for four. I'm also going to burst to save the Druid. Two instances of damage this turn, that's enough to take the Slate out and then we can start pushing against the actual core. I'm going to need two instances of damage before we hit the exit side. That doesn't seem like a good possibility to me. I'm going to continue pushing that. The Squire is, in the worst case scenario, going to be the only target who dies here by taking in all of the damage on themselves. That's going to be the case. We need more damage sides. Our scoundrel needs to upgrade and it needs to uh, be good damage sides. Uh, I'm terrified. I would love that chain. Thank you much, Lee. Chain through the party. Take out the slate. Uh, we can't save the druid and the student. Just gonna save the druid. More important, and they have more max HP, and, you know, they grow over the course of a fight as well, so... Even more reason there. That's already enough for the kill, and in fact, Sinew gets it by themselves. Takes the core out, Stone Revenge. We've killed 15 slates, unlocking a new boss monster, Basalt. Uh, what else was it? Hey, we found 93 out of 100 of the heroes to find. We've found uh, 57 out of the 126 achievements, though. 75 deaths, we've unlocked an item, Ritual Dagger, a four cost, I four cost, sorry, fell, uh, four tier, tier four item, rather. Uh, replace the rightmost sign with revive the four topmost defeated allies, and then death. Marty yourself for them. Uh, Bard and Caldera here. Hmm. So Caldera does have some synergy with the other characters that I have. The Druid in particular has one damage to all enemies, heal one to all allies, and then Skald is three damage to all, oh sorry, two damage to all damaged enemies. So with six mana, yes, it's steep, but with six mana, I would have the ability to nuke the entire enemy squad. Over the course of two turns, I could even attempt to do that. Uh, we also have the possibility here of the Bard. Shield one to all allies, gain one reroll cantrip, a two mana single use side, as well as a shield defense side. I think we're going to take Caldera here. Up against a Crone, a Core Egg, and two Goblins. Gonna take the AoE hit on Sinew, really hoping that chain comes in clutch here. Also gonna take Caldera's one damage instance for mana gain. Mm -hmm. Now I have the ability to deal three damage to all. Squire will save themselves with that defense. And Scoundrel does nothing. Fair. Okay. Sinew hit all them. Easy Scald. A little bit more AoE in the next round and we've got this. The Crone also promises to de uh, deal rather two damage to the topmost enemy, so I should try and protect them. Um, 
Oh, two damage to the topmost enemy. That's not enough to kill the uh, scoundrel this round. Okay, everyone rolls. I just need more damage. Well, my god. Did I ever got that more damage? Uh, and finally, we get the huge payoff of being able to actually use the chain cleave effect. Abacus and Iron Pendant. Abacus is really interesting in shifting your middle row across by one. Your entire middle row across by one. We do have a Gambler's 2, which changes all sides. Uh, I don't think anyone still wants the Abacus, but... Actually... <laughs> that moves the Chain Cleave side to the 2 damage instance there, which is, I guess, pretty nice, because it's just constantly got its Chain Cleave effect going on, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna take the Iron Pendant, it's just, it's just much more comfortable. Let's give the Iron Pendant to Sinew. Actually, the Coag being here is helpful in this fight. It's gonna give us the ability to make this bandit flee much more easily. I really hope we do manage to do that on turn one here. Oh yeah, that'll do it. Worst case scenario, I can super overkill that core egg easily. Very good thing to be able to guarantee here. Uh, the Cyclops is only going to be attacking three targets. Squire, that's your best side. You can take it. Sinew, you can roll. Whoa. Um... Actually, it might be a problem for me. Yeah, I don't think I can activate the the cleave chain. Because if I do it, if I cleave... Actually, no, I can. I cleave the Cyclops and Bandit, and then Sinew follows up. And now we've got this core on half health, which means the Cruel Attack from Caldera will deal six damage to it rather than three, which means the Bandit then flees as well. Leaving us with just the Cyclops, and the Cyclops in four damages time is going to be stunned for a round, so... A very easy time, expectedly, against the Cyclops as well. I'll just lock damage, rather than continue pushing that and failing. Hmm. We did get to save three mana from last turn, so it wasn't just a complete write-off. Okay, never mind, we're good. Please upgrade the Scoundrel. I'm absolutely desperate for it. Uh, Rogue. That's an upgrade to the Scoundrel. It is precisely what I asked for. Do I want it? Th no, I do. I do. I do. The alternative option here is the Guardian, who does also have a Cleave attack, which is more ways to activate that sinew. Before I upgrade the Scoundrel, let's think. Who would take a add exert and plus one to all sides here? Honestly, whoever would take it, they probably don't even want it in this fight specifically. Okay. I think, yeah, I think I am going with the Rogue. I think I do just need the additional damage, especially the poison is going to be useful. Uh, add two archers in order to get a random tier zero item. Tier zero items, most of the time, aren't helpful. Do I really feel like I could survive two extra archers to try and get that right now when we have a core egg that could split on turn one? I don't think so. Not only do I think I possibly couldn't do it, but also it's possible that it wouldn't even help me if I did. Druid starting to grow that defense is a good look on you. Squire, that's the best defense available. Honestly, Sinew defending this round might not just be bad. Poison the Slime Queen, get a little bit of damage on Core Egg. Start defending individual targets. I could focus a target here, unfortunately. It would over-defend significantly. I can only give six defense to characters that are going to take four damage. A 
again, the Koag. Giving us a little bit of extra time here. Deeply appreciate it. Four damage from Sinew right now? No, I probably just want to be in a holding pattern. I'm going to take another growth on the Druid. Four damage from Sinew now, though? Again, no. <laughs> well, how about it's the only option now? So take it, nerd. What the game said very, very loudly to me, and I said it was rude, and it said, honestly, I've been having a hard week. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm taking it out on you. And I said, frankly, I really appreciate the emotional maturity that you've developed over the course of these three sentences we've exchanged. I forgive you entirely. Will you marry me? It was a weird conversation, admittedly. I'm not going to say it was a normal conversation. Do you think that's a normal conversation to have? No. It was a weird conversation, admittedly. But I'm just relaying it as factfully as I possibly can to you. Hey, uh, we got damage we can do to the enemies as well still. Um, getting the rogue to dodge this round might be pretty good. Because the squire can deal a maximum of one themselves. Hmm. That's why I should probably attempt to defend them. So, oh my god, you managed to. I ex fully expected you to fail. I absolutely did not believe in you. I've never believed in you. Since the day you were born. Uh, Two balances? Getting some healing across my party. As well as moving the Slime Queen to a position where they much more easily die. It's kind of unfortunate to be this deep in the fight and there's still two slimers on maximum HP. Like, that's not very comforting. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> Least damage to waste on that kill. Four just instantly kills you. Two, so three, and then a burst, and then two hit, and we take out all the targets on the field. We also lose all of our mana. We now only have four slimelets. Do I just want to safely save two people on the field and safely take one out? Extremely slow, but I think it's good enough. One slime lit down, two slime lit down. And the rest follows soon. Nice. 60 achievements. Uh, complete any 60 achievements with unlocked mode simple as well as change of heart. Heal for 1,000 total, unlocking a new item change of heart which is replace heal and self-heal signs with basic shield signs, retaining their original values and keywords. You also get a harpoon and a dueling pistol. Duel adds duel to the leftmost side, times two versus targets who are targeting me. And then there's also the harpoon. Harpoon is a good way to give the squire the ability to do like effective damage here. Sinew having times two to targets the targeting me via duel on the chain cleave side is also pretty good. I'm going to give that a go. I haven't taken the dueling pistol ever. I would very much like to see it. I don't think it's going to ever trigger the chain off of duel because I've never seen duel as a keyword before, but we can hope. Hmm. The rest of these suddenly relevant, I think it. Against zombies and illusions, that Koeg is popping on round one. This hurts. Oh, this hurts. I really need some AoE. The balance will do it. One damage to everyone on the field, helping you take him out that way. I could just let the Squire die and absorb all of the attacks that would otherwise come in for the sinew here, noting that the squire is 
not particularly useful right now. We lose out on the ability to use the area of effect if we lock that on Caldera, unfortunately. I really, really, really need one mana here. If we don't get a mana, it's going to suck a lot. And a, in possible lieu of that, getting a one damage cantrip would be great. Oh my god, we got the one damage mana. I'm so happy. Uh, I strike Core Egg. We use balance, dealing one damage to everyone. The Sinew absolutely has to take out one of the zombies, right? There's no way I can focus on a core egg first. Is there? If you're taking all of that damage, and then I'm just going to test this, and then I killed there, then the Squire only takes two damage this round. Yeah, it's... It's much easier to be able to take out the core after that, I think. Mmm, time to be proven wrong. Okay. Yeah, I think we just keep pushing damage in. No reason not to. Right, Sin, you can lock in the nothing that they're going to get there. Rogue can dodge everything. That's incredible. You defend yourself, Druid will defend Sinew entirely, Rogue defends themselves entirely as well by dodging. We get one mana for the next round, and we dealt one damage to the core. Could have been a lot worse. The Caldera's Cruel Hit and then the Rogue's Cruel Hit does take out the Zombie this round. Which leaves just the Core attacking the Druid. If the Sinew rolls in to exert here, we can also then kill that Core. And they do! Beautiful! Three damage and then four damage kills the Zombie instantaneously. Four damage and then two damage follow-up kills the Core! Cleric versus Monk. Again, having access to more AoE so that we can trigger Scald very early does appeal to me. Slightly more mana from the Cleric. Is that real? Like, one. One mana on each side. I don't think that's going to be worth it. I'm going to take the Monk. And, in fact, I'm also going to give the Monk plus one to incoming shields because they have self-shield sides. Uh, not that the previous character didn't have that, but I've only just thought of it. <laughs> Alright, core eggs, graves, imps, snipers, oh my. Oh, a lot of summons on turn one, buddy! All of the graves were going to summon, but the imp decided to summon it. only has one space that does that. Um, I'm going to tap out some effects here in order to just get some instantaneous placement on the board. Sure, I guess all of that's fine with me too. Uh, let's go for the Imp getting removed with Caldera's three damage there. The Monk defends the Druid, dealing two damage to the Sniper in the back line. Sinew murders the Core Egg on the top. And I work between the Rogue and Druid in order to finish that grave. Come on! Enough mana to generate balance. That's all I wanted. And we absolutely got it. Oh, yeah, I'll take that too. So we roll a... Balance, dealing one damage to all enemies. And then the monk may actually direct the attack away from the druid onto themselves. And that sniper in the back line is going to be very easy to kill. Worst case scenario, I directly target the bones on top. Oh my god. What a god hand right there. 
Uh, Monk defends Sinew, which then kills the Sniper for us. And then you may follow up with your own damage. Bones down. Sack of mana. Replace the middle column with blank, plus four, and blank. Plus four mana, rather specifically, and blank, rather. Uh, being able to suddenly generate four mana on a character is incredible. Plus two max HP, as well as plus two to incoming healing from the ruby is not bad, but our healing class right now in the druid doesn't really heal, and we only really cast balance, like, once. Once. I kind of want to take the sack of mana, but do I want to give it to anyone right now? I could give it to Caldera. I'm going to take the random tier 4 or 6. We got tier 4, Mana Jelly. Add single use and cantrip to all of your mana gain sides. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to give that to the Druid. I'm fine with this, because the Druid almost always wants to roll the growth hits instead. Yeah. Yeah, let's see how this works out for us. Up against Core Egg, a Fanatic, and two Slimers. Core Egg Cores, ready to break. Hmm. That dual chain effect, I want to see how it affects those Slimers in particular. Actually, I'm going to say that I'm done rolling, and I'm going to use the dual chain effect against this Fnatic, and I want to see, will it deal do, uh, two damage to the other Slimers and then one damage to the Fnatic? No. But if I target the Slimer individually, it's two damage to everyone. Oh, that's so much better even. Oh, it propagates. Okay, now I know. Yes, I'm definitely keeping that. I already knew I was keeping that, but now I know for sure. Uh, poison's still going to be important. We've got a exerting turn on an enemy here. Monk, I would far prefer you to attempt to redirect damage onto yourself here. Hey, I was about to say you tried, but I'm not certain that's the case. Um, monk defend myself. Sinew attack the Slimer on the top line, spreading that damage. I also do need to get rid of the Koi Egg, so I actually have to attack it with a poison individually instead. Rather than attacking the Fnatic, I would have deeply preferred. Please get some of the cantrip mana this turn, Druid. Thank you. Immediately did. Let's push that roll. Oh my god. Uh, oh, Sinew's not even being targeted this turn, so that's just an AoE hit. Which is still good. It's just not, you know, absolutely everything. So... Let's chain that AoE hit there. If I use Scald right now, I take down the Slimer and the Slimelet, as well as dealing important damage to the other targets. I can also take out the remaining Slimer. But do I want to? Because Monk is only useful defending a target right now. If the Druid keeps the Rogue alive, then optimizing around saving targets on board seems bad. Yeah, I'm actually just going to pro uh, proactively kill the Fnatic. I don't want them next round to cause a real ruckus. That's a chain, baby. That's what chains is. Um, do I have any more damage for other targets later? Okay, that's good enough. I'll take it. Uh, or rather, it's a duel, not a chain. Uh, we duel, we do two damage to all of them, and then we remove the slime on, we burst the remainder. Dancer versus Bash here. Dancer has two one damage cantrip signs, as well as a one reroll cantrip, has one damage to all enemies, Rampage, and Pain. 
on that. Also has a three damage side and dodge all enemy attacks. Hmm. We have a lot of different ways of dealing one damage and one damage in AoE and things like that. Which, that seems good to me, but the problem is when we go up against enemies that have spikes, when we go up against enemies that, you know, uh, have just a huge amount of HP and things like that, it's going to be not particularly helpful. I think I take the bash here. Specifically, their ability to just deal five at heavy and seven exit is huge. I just need large hits I can do against targets. Also, if the bash has the ability to just do a 14 damage exit to a character that's targeting them, Especially against bosses. That's just... That's kills. The Bash also does have a side that does steal damage, so I may want to consider later giving it the plus one from incoming shields that is currently being held by the monk. That five damage is just take a target off the field. We do those. Caldera attacking a target and letting the Scald go would be nice. Uh, road to dodge an incoming effect, monk to try and prevent some. Okay, who doesn't want to be weakened next round, like, desperately? I think the monk doesn't, but... Okay, let's, let's focus first. Bash, kill the phones that's going to be dealing the most damage to relevant targets here. Caldera just get a little bit more mana available for a future turn. I'm not going to use the Scald right now. Rogue is fine. They are going to avoid all of the current incoming effects. The Monk's Shield 1 sides will do nothing if I don't prevent the incoming damage on them, so I think I will choose them as my target. And end the round. Which is looking to petrify two of the sides from the druid. How dare they? Yeah, the bash still has the ability to take out a full target with that. Uh, monk can uh, cleanse a target as well as remove the weaken. So we can still have some impact from them. That's great. We can also you know, then propagate that to a different target afterwards. Uh, another mana doesn't seem essential right now. But we get it anyway. Is that the right first target? It might in fact just be that hit and then Scald. No way, it shouldn't be. Uh, let's go with the original target. It's, I, I think I was uh, making a mistake there based off of the fact that thinking I could get through to the back line this round, which I, I just cannot. Um, let's, I mean, I should cleanse in an effective way. And then... And then I should heal in an effective way as well. But the bash is actually safe, so I don't need to. Kaldara, give us the extra mana. Good to see that the druid isn't going to have to deal with petrified sides here. That would have been a nightmare, knowing that we have another side that's already used, another side that's about to be used instantly, and another side also. Uh, bash. We can prevent an effect on you. Ugh. Actually, that's an instant kill on a skeleton as soon as they come out. So we defend Bash, Rogue does poison to the Lich in the back line, Bash murders one of the bones, and we keep on attacking. Do I... Yeah, I'll just throw out the burst. 
try and hold on to all the rest of resources. That bones is effectively just a little landmine that's sitting in my opponent's party, waiting to blow up. Oh my god, if I can get the bash to just directly target there. Oh my god. Actually, we can. Oh. So good. Okay. Caldera, remove your problem there, your uh, weakness. Now your mana gain hit takes out the bones. The bash is targeting, or rather the lich is targeting the bash. 14 damage, instantly kills. Yes. And then I start setting up for a skull through all of them to kill them all. That'll do. We defend Caldera, we attack one, and Scald kills the entire party. Karma. Add self-heal to all heal sides, self-shield to all shield sides, and pain to all damage sides. So, do no damage, but have massive impacts otherwise. Self-heal to all heal sides. Self-shield to all shield sides. I mean, ideally this goes on someone like the, uh, the monk. They would self-shield when they shield a target for two and cleanse. Would that also cleanse them? I think not. They would also self-shield when they shield a target for the repel. Swap the druid with the rogue. No side effects. So this would start... I mean, you know, the, the one obvious thing is that a target that is at the very top is less likely to be included in cleave effects. Because for every other target, there's three people you could target in order... Well, for every other target other than the top and the bottom, there's three people you could target, which would include them in a cleave effect. There's only two that could be targeted for the rogue and the caldera. Uh, does it, is that, is that impactful for us? I think I might as well give it a go. Core Egg Warchief, Ghost, Null, and another Warchief there. Uh, right, also should probably pop that one down. Let's see what we can get done in this fight. This is kind of what I expected. The monk has the ability to take the hits away from Caldera, who is otherwise receiving them right now. But I kind of want the monk to contribute towards a larger shield for Bash, in order to let Bash do a big chunk of damage against the enemies here. Caldera, do you really just want to take one mana in this situation and deal one damage? That may just be the case. That's four poison as well that the monk is intending to let Caldera just have. So we should prioritize the war chiefs then. Okay. What does prioritizing the war chiefs look like? Well, it looks like spurning this steel side and exclusively looking for the heavy sides or the exert on bash. And then after that, it still looks like taking the effect away from Caldera. Okay, yeah. Uh, Monk is going to keep the self-shield side here. And everyone else needs to push. Druid got their damage and so did the Bash. The Bash can also now just take out the Ghost wholesale immediately, which is also pretty good. 
That's four damage and four poison that it's preventing, eight incoming damage, versus taking out a war chief, which prevents four damage and then one damage from each of the others, as well as one poison damage from the war, uh, ghost. So, you know, it's, it basically just comes down to it's harder to take out the ghost in a single turn than it is to take out the war chief in a single turn, so we should probably utilize that when we can. Uh, I'll push that again. I prefer this outcome. would love to deal just four damage to the ghost, though. Take him out that way. Boy, that would be good. Wait. This is not the way I'm supposed to be doing it. This is entirely the opposite of the way that I said I was supposed to be doing it. But if I tried to do it this way, how would it go? It goes down to 2H. And no, the poison is going to be way too much. Bash. Murder the ghost. We just happen to overkill it a lot. Oh, whoops. Oh, heck, gosh, and dang. Uh, Druid and rogue. I mean, hilariously, if the core egg had rolled, it would have summoned three cores and died if I left the war chief on the field. That could have been bad. That could have been tragic. Yeah, not able to use these to take out a target, except for the Koeg, which isn't doing anything this round. I'm gonna hold on, leave the possibility that I finish the top off with a Scald, making it effectively free. I mean, Bash is never gonna be hitting anything, so I'll just lock that side for them. damage. I do like damage against targets. I'll lock the poison so that I have something. Okay. Monk, target thyself. So the self shield also got increased by one and the shield got increased by one. So it's four defense with just one hit there. Unfortunately, it doesn't do four damage to all the targets that were targeting you, but there weren't that many. Uh, now it's... War Chief, Scald, and we murder the War Chieftain on top, leaving just a Knoll and a War Chief to clean up. Maybe I shouldn't have been so uh, afeared of hard. Especially now that I have something in my back pocket, the, the shortcut shuffle, to make sure that we still have something to do in the episode. Goodbye, War Chief. Assassin. Two damage range engage. Also the three damage single use poison. Also three damage cruel hits. All of those very, very good. I do like the assassin. I kind of want to take them. They would have the ability to take out the sniper instantly. Even the core egg instantly because it's two damage engage exert. Uh, not exert, sorry, engage. So if the target's on full HP, you do twice as much damage. Some more range damage for being able to take out the spikers in the back line. Also poison for the bosses. However, it's against one of my favorite things, which is cantrip. And there's a uh, cantrip one mana, cantrip one mana, and cantrip reroll on the sorcerer here, who would also have the ability to give us access to poison via Miasma Cleave. I have to. It's too fun. I really like the sorcerer. Um... Yeah, I don't think there's anything that I can give to the Sorcerer that would really change any of this. Uh, in this fight, yeah, Bash may still want to like hit a Spiker or a Ogre with the Exert side, instantly killing them. So we'll keep the Dueling Pistol on them. Obviously, if no target in the fight has more than 7 HP, the Dueling Pistol on Bash makes no sense. So... Trying to keep an eye out for those kinds of things. I really do like the druid doing growth on turn one. The monk may self shield here, also while protecting another character on the field. The bash may just prevent someone from going off, specifically the ogre here. 
Really? Do I want to prevent one damage from the ogre to everyone on the field? Is that worth it? Is that impactful? Might just be safe. Oh, rogue, please stop damaging yourself like that. Absolute nightmare. Okay. Rogue and the Druid murder the core egg on the top line. I'm gonna... Do I really want to prevent the ogre from doing the damage here? Surely not. I'm gonna damage the spiker and then prevent them from doing their instance there. Protect the sorcerer as well as the monk protecting themselves. Yeah, that seems a lot more reasonable. Preventing seven damage and an individual target rather than five damage distributed. That wasn't even gonna be five damage distributed because it was gonna have to get past a bunch of people who didn't, weren't gonna take it. No, they weren't gonna take it. They weren't gonna take it anymore. Uh, the ability to stun a target is still nice. This feels like a turn uh, deeply lacking in wonder. The rogue is going to have to lock that because the worst case scenario is I roll a cantrip and it hits the spiker and I just lose the rogue before the turn even begins. Okay. Rogue, save yourself. The spiker is dealing two damage to everyone. You are the target that I prevent the incoming from. Absolutely you are. Monk protects the druid. Boy. One poison, damage and cleave. I don't want to waste the three damage here, but it kills my sorcerer if I do so. I guess I can burst to defend my sorcerer in this instance. But I think I'm actually just going to try and push the spiker down faster. Two very, very healthy targets and three exceptionally dead ones. Five for the largest on field. That will damage. That's cleave. That's damage. Uh... Okay. If... I can undo this and re-roll if I need to, so... I'm just gonna use this for a little bit of testing, because it does look like we might have something very much approaching lethal there. 15. We got him? Mushroom. Add decay and plus one to all sides. Interesting. Very interesting. Decay and plus one to all sides. So annoying for the sorcerer who would just kind of collapse under it. Obviously not for a cantrip build. Decay and plus one to all sides. I mean, you know, putting that on the monk isn't awful. I guess we could give it to the druid. There's also sickle. Plus one to all of your lowest pip sides. <gasps> Never mind, we found something better for the sorcerer. Plus one to all of your lowest pip sides. The sorcerer only has one pips. All of them get an extra pip. Uh, the ability to possibly get two rerolls as well as the... Uh, that's so much more mana. Oh my god. It's not just double because it's additional rerolls. This is good. This is very good. I'm ready for it. Uh, Koyak in the top line giving us another opportunity to take it out with overkill in order to help that bandit die. Uh, I mean, look, the monk using that against themselves is four block as well as one damage to the core as well as one damage to the cyclops. That's nice. It's going to be hard to convince me that Mash doesn't want to use the heavy attack here. Because we can stun that cyclops in this first round. Okay, push that roll. Oh, bunch of effect here. We just get two mana and one damage. And just push the roll again. Oh, and again. Okay, 12 mana this turn. Beautiful.
the fire damage is still for the Cyclops, which then prevents its outcoming damage to us at all. Hmm. How mean do I want to be here? Very? Okay. I'm going to... Uh, actually, hang on. That's not the way to do it. It's... Here. Poison Miasma, Poison Miasma, Poison Miasma. The core in the back line is now going to die. And so is the Cyclops and so is the Bandit. Leaving only a core egg and a Bandit remaining. <laughs> One poison, you know. Best of luck, buddy. I don't think that's going to manage. I don't think that's really going to register on the Richter scale we're currently working with. Beauty. Um, actually, I'm going to get the overkill on the core egg to make the bandit run away. Dablist versus Fate. Oh. So we lose? Oh, no. No! Wait, hang on. Yeah, add single use and cantrip to all mana slash mana gain side. So unfortunately that would also add it to the heal and shield to mana gain. If it only gave it to the single use ones that were already single use, I mean, that would have been incredible, but that's not the case. Uh, Dablest. Five shield, five heal, four damage, three damage, three damage, and three mana. I mean, it's not bad, but like the ability to generate mana, which is both, both of these characters' real strength is that they generate mana very effectively. The ability for them to generate mana very effectively is not as much needed. We have the Sorcerer. Hmm. Fate also comes with the spell Strand, Heal 2, Spell Rescue, which means the cost is refunded if it saves a hero. I'm honestly probably not going to be particularly good at using Spell Rescue in this. We haven't got... Well, I was about to say, we haven't got many people with, like, higher max HP, but at the same rate, we've got three people that aren't even level three yet. I'm still going to need damage instances for a while. I think I have to take the dab list here. It kind of sucks to lose out on the cantrips, especially knowing I already have a sorcerer, but I think this is a good idea. Oh, hey, it's the new boss, Basalt. Basalt, one chip. The first time I take exactly one damage, double it to two, then become vulnerable to two damage. So I want to do one damage, then two damage, then three damage, then four damage, and that will do two, four, six, eight. Dablist having the ability to block someone for five here is pretty sick. Bash could just remove one of the corpses from the field, which is probably a pretty good idea, actually. Basalt is currently also using Inflict Death, adds death to target side for a turn on the Druid in the top line, so they are really having a rough time with it. I could shield them with a cleanse to try and prevent that, give them the ability still to use their next turn. That'd be nice. Ugh. Sorcerer really whiffed their two hits on the blank and the final was not the one that hit the cantrip, so I don't get the extra cast of it. There we go. Let's prevent the druid from taking way too much damage. The sorcerer absolutely cannot be weakened here. That will just prevent them from doing anything. So I will prevent that from being. I want to make sure that the core egg is constantly within the ability of my characters to kill it easily. So I'm going to do two damage to it here. Yeah, because it's going to do the summon this round. Hmm. Dablist only having one damage here is actually pretty good. Very effective for harming Basalt. Um... Oh, but I, I I guess I also can do that with Miasma. Okay, yeah. Uh, do 
Do I want to block the druid again to prevent the incoming inflict death? Would I even ultimately be able to prevent it? This is another nine damage from one target. So even the people I'm taking off the field aren't going to prevent this here. Dablis hitting the block is basically, I think, the only way I can do this. Well, that or a bunch of bursts on the target, which I really don't want to do. Oh, God. That was wrong. The sorcerer was, was obviously supposed to roll there. Wow! Oh! That hurts so much! Got betrayed! <laughs> You know what? We're losing the Druid this round, I think. I think I just have to accept that. There's the Miasma. There's the Burst against the Base Salts as well. Lost the Druid. You've inflicted death. I mean, look, if Base Salts is going to attack the same target with that two turns in a row, yeah, absolutely we're going to lose that person. Of course. It would be absurd if we didn't. Um, I mean, that's a good block to roll out on Dablist here. I mean, yeah, Bash just removed the courts. Oh. This one's weird. I'm going to let my one mana disappear here so that I can keep extra mana for the next turn. Because Slate was summoned. Each of those HP needs to be removed individually. And that's going to be uh, a bit of a trial. Let's have the Monk move the attacks to themselves. Rather than our best character. Extra rerolls, thank you. Best character. Three damage, thank you. Dablist. Next to the best character. Hopefully... Absorbing a little of it via osmosis. Do three damage to the base alts and redirect the sorcerer. Let's burst once and then we can miasma three times here for a bunch of poison as well as three instances, well, four instances of damage against the slate, one of them from the poison, three of them from the miasma. Hilariously, that's really, really good for us. The monk can defend themselves and the dabblers can heal them back up. I say hilariously. That it's more a thing that occurred. In fact, not going to be necessary as the miasma clears up the enemies itself. Sapphire ring. Add plus one to all mana mana gain sides. Wait. No, wait, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Uh, We have to take it. But... The sickle goes on first, then the sapphire ring goes on afterwards. And we've got three mana on the cantrip sides. Yes. I just need more rerolls. Incredible. Bash instantly kills a target for us. Love that. Monk, that's a very effective defense that you can do there. Dablist, same. God, the mana! I'm gonna push it. Yeah, I shouldn't have. I could have just got three more mana if I settled there. Um, okay. So the core egg on the top line is going to die and someone to call this round. Ooh. I'm fine with that, I think? Oh my god. You know why I'm fine with it? Yeah, let's just... Here's why I'm fine with it. Balance, balance, balance. There goes all of the snipers. <laughs> we definitely didn't need as much defense as we ultimately ended up having there. A load of the core on the zombie. Shaping up effectively. Uh, I'll attempt to do the same in reverse, but that is not the hand we want for it. That'll kill a zombie, though. And I'll just stun the core and do that next round. Incredible. Keeper and Doctor. 
What? Okay, doctor. I don't understand how to use you. One damage to all heroes and monsters. Poison. That's its leftmost side. It also has heal to regen, which is good. Uh, heal to mana gain, also very good. Uh, and the spell is liquor for four mana, heal 20, cleanse. I don't know if I want to give up my AoE spell in balance. So, Monk is... Oh, oh, this, this is obviously Keeper upgrade from Monk. Definitely. Um, I'm going to give the Keeper Karma again, and then the Iron Pendant. You don't have the ability to redirect targets to you anymore, unfortunately. But you do have Steel Sides. So if someone blocks you, you can then block someone else for a ridiculous amount. So that would be the way that we would actually give the block to bash would be five uh, shield five steel self shield and then propagating that across to the bash by providing armor to the keeper beforehand with someone else like a dablist or a druid or burst in fact probably burst considering how easy that is for us to access okay we are up against core egg basilisk core demon and another basilisk Again, the exert duel is still reasonable on the on the old bash there, I think. Hmm. Interesting. The Basilisk on the top side is attempting to do a giant weaken effect, and the demon is attempting to summon. I don't know who I want to target first, and I also don't know if I should even use my heavy. Are enough people attacking the same target that I can afford using a keeper defense side, or should I just roll out the cell shield? I think I'll roll out the cell shield from that. and then push on the rest of these. I'll take the stun on the bash, because that's enough to at least prevent the keeper, uh, sorry, the core from attacking. Oh, but if the core's not attacking, then the the bash doesn't need all of this armor from the keeper. I'm going to push the bash again. Hmm. Okay, we have 8 mana, we have a 5 damage heavy attack, and we have a 3 damage attack that can go to whatever location it wants. So 5 and 3 is enough to get that demon really angry. The sorcerer is not being weakened next turn. So 5 and 3 is... Uh... <laughs> Do I want the Dablist to take the six damage here? No, because I have to use two bursts in this situation anyway, so I may as well use them first. The first bursts. And then, for these remaining targets on the field, I mean, like, a single Miasma through them seems like a great idea to me. Get some poison coverage. Unfortunately, the Sorcerer is on low HP already via direct targeting, but is not even being targeted this time. Uh, Druid being able to cleanse a target is very effective here as well. Four health from Dablis is incredible too. Oh, nothing but non-stop bops. Uh, I can continue pushing on that one. Oh boy, that didn't get a lot better. Well, I guess it actually did. Because we can heal and prevent the poison on the Keeper to keep them alive. Also gives them one more shield to provide to the Bash, who then has six damage on this steel attack. 
Honestly, I should really just take out the core, right? Or a basilisk, even. Although that basilisk was about to provide poison to a target who now doesn't need it. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll just kill the core. Because uh, then I can follow up with another miasma easily. And if I do that enough times, the fight is over. <laughs> If I can just live long enough and use Miasma enough times, that's it. That's that's the whole fight. So that's why having like a big defensive keeper is very effective. Having defense and heal on this character is very effective. It's why the character that the druid is going to upgrade into needs to be a character that keeps us alive quite effectively as well. Yeah, we have the kill. I know, because we have Miasma. Helm of Power and Angel Feather. Oh man, Angel Feather on Shield 5 Self Shield. That's really good. There's also Helm of Power, double the pips of the leftmost side. I, I can't just... I, in fact, I can't even add it to the Sorcerer. Uh, the Dabless could get 6 mana on a single turn, which isn't... You know, it's not bad. The Bash just being able to instantly remove a target from the field because it's 28 damage <laughs> with the Helm of Power. Also really good. But the Angel Feather for keeping my party alive longer, I think, has to pip it. Trolls, Spikers, and Trolls, oh my! Also, there's Koeg, but I'm not going to continue remembering to... Well, not continue remembering, but continue mentioning that, noting that uh, there's one in every fight. <laughs> Bash. I kind of do want you to roll for the ability to just deal 14 to a target, almost instantly kill them. But I'm not going to push you past here. Keeper, you'll take the self-defense rescue side. Uh... Druid, if you attack, I can actually get even more shield out of the Keeper here. Push the other two. Nice. Okay. Keeper, defend the Bash first, I believe. And then that rescues the Keeper because it also has the Self Shield. So because it's done that, now the Keeper has the ability to give 10 to someone instead. So, oh my god, this combo is ridiculous. So, it has shield, 5, steel, so it's increased by the amount of shield I have, self-shield, so it provides that shield also to myself, and rescue. So if I rescue anyone, I then get to, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. We attack the Spiker specifically so that the Keeper can use that again. The Keeper now has 15 on themselves here. <sighs> 55 armor on the Keeper if they use it against themselves there. From three activations of this. Obviously, I will instead uh, give the final effect to a different character. But it's even 35 still on the Keeper! Ridiculous. Uh, let's throw three Miasmas out against the party. The Keeper keeps us alive. The Sorcerer generates ridiculous mana while we roll, and then we just poison everyone. It's beautiful. Bash got their side. Thank you. Uh... I guess I continue pushing on all of these. Wow, Sorcerer really, really didn't want to help us that round. Uh, the troll is attacking everyone, so I know that it's going to be capable of dying. A another burst through the party, and, or rather a miasma and a burst gets us there. Was that battle 19? I think that might have been battle 19. Yep. Now it's just time for a uh, druid upgrade. Shaman. So it is It is just basically the next version of Druid, but it's worth noting that it's very good. It has heal 5, vitality, it has heal 10, heal 2, mana gain, has the shield 3 growth, damage 3 growth, but the spell in particular comes to mind uh, of Ritual, 
for four, heal two, cleanse, and cleave. That's pretty important when you're up against a dragon that has 40 health as well as three damage poison and cleave. We don't have large max HP numbers. Having the ability to save them like that is very effective. We also have the Forsaken down here. Three mana, revive the two, top two most... Uh, sorry, top two... <laughs> revive the top two most defeated allies. Revive the two top most defeated allies. Uh, heal two to all other allies as well as pain fatality, so it increases their max HP, and heal two to all allies. This is like a, a general effect, but I don't need that. I need big individual effects as well as a general effect through the spells, because I have the ability to generate mana very effectively. Uh, okay, add single use and cantrip to all of your mana sides. Do I want to do that to anyone? Probably not. Do I want to do the Cambler's 2 to No? Does anyone want to hold something different to what they are currently holding? No. Let's go into the battle. Dragon, core, coeg, archer. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, that's, uh... I mean, I don't think the bash should exert themselves like this on turn one. I think it's actually a really bad idea. But, just to point out what it would do. Uh, yeah, that's, that's 14 damage against the dragon right now. Would have done. It actually also does take out the core by itself. Mmm, taking out the core by itself actually might be crucial for saving the Shaman this round. No, I'll be fine. Uh, Dablis, you take the mana, everyone else pushes. I'm going to take the three damage shield on the Shaman here and push again. Extremely worth it. My god. Uh, here's why it's worth it. Shaman protects themselves for... Wait, hang on. They don't even protect themselves for the three. They protect the Keeper for three. The Keeper then protects the Shaman entirely. Uh, they now... It's not going to happen. They're not going to die. This is good. Uh, okay, how do I... Maximize in the next maximal effect might just be providing that to the bash who now has 18 sorry 19 damage steel And I almost settled for 14 Then we go asthma my oh uh. Hmm Yes, yeah, so the miasma targeting got uh, a lot worse there. Alas. It'll have to be good enough. We take a trivial amount of damage, frankly. Compared to what we've done. There's the rescue site again. Oh my god. Oh my god, we also got the shield attack side. I am uh, over the moon. I cannot wait to see how this manifests in our numbers. Okay. Uh... Oh my god, this is going to be so good. <laughs> it's going to be such a large number. <laughs> Keep pushing. Yeah, that's fine. Keep pushing. Shaman rolling shield would actually be incredible right now. Oh well. Okay. Keeper, shield yourself. Then, save the Shaman. Then, uh, I mean, I wish the Bash had one less HP here. 32 damage. 33, sorry, damage with this steel attack on the Bash here. Oh, beautiful. And let's just throw that big old number straight at the enemy. And it only makes sense that we finish this fight with another Miasma against the final core egg. That was our first hard and our first victory in hard. Classic hard victory and a hard victory. Each of those unlocking something there for us. Uh, oh, two new modes. Cursed and Simple. Cursed is infinite play until you lose. You start with a curse and you gain a, uh, a curse after each boss and a blessing after each loop. Okay, yep. Uh, you know, just casually, what, how many hours am I in this now? Uh, 20-ish? Casually 20, they include a new game mode that is 
deeply interesting. Simple. All unlocks disabled. Uh, lock things are not usually stronger, just more complex. I've been pointing out the, the design uh, uh, intent, rather, in having done that up until this point myself as well. We also see here that having completed hard now unlocks unfair, which, no, I'm not going to do unfair. Uh, well, yet. I'm not going to do unfair yet. Don't expect that I'm moving up to unfair. But maybe I'm moving up to hard. I mean, we did win on our first episode. For the moment, let me just say that my name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slice and Die. Serious playlists on the top left. YouTube recommendation down below. Stream past on the names of the people so generally supporting the public on patreon.com slash Rhapsody plays. And above the thank team, a special thanks to this episode to someone named Sean. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all next time.